For a short time, take a moment to peer with me into the misty fog that clouds our vision. That is the future, and ask questions. This will be quite an interesting episode. Starting now, we need to go back to the Anchor SDK video and talk about a couple specific ideas. I will not be covering the entire breakdown of the Anchor Gaming SDK. Instead, I'm going to assume you're familiar enough with the idea that we can continue that conversation into the furthest regions of outer space. Prepare your spacesuit. But before we launch to the moon and beyond, well, you need to know where you're at. Let me clear that up. Welcome to Unusual Due Diligence. I'm your host, Poseidon, God of the Sea. In today's fresh episode, we examine a recent patent award to Flexa Network. And then, from there, draw a dotted line by way of some late-night conjecture to anchor with one incredible idea. What if AMP token and Anchor found utility with one another in a completely new kind of way? And then let's toss in some surprise Algaron just to spice it up. Put on your tinfoil hat. It is going to be one of those kind of episodes. There's been a lot of buzz on the AMP token subreddit because members there have a thesis. And lately that thesis? Well, it's being validated, admittedly at the pace of change in the old financial world, but it is being validated. The thesis is that the existing world of finance and this new world of finance, they are not so separate. It's been a long time coming. For example, way back in early 2020, perhaps earlier, the Flexa network began talking about their spend SDK. They've since been slowly building out their network and working towards their goals. There's a lot to unpack there, but in today's episode, we need a special kind of view. You see, let's look at their recent patent, but from an unusual lens. But there's a problem. The patent is several thousand lines long and filled with numbers, letters, and words of more than two syllables. How do we take this really complex patent and then simplify that down into something that can fit into a bite-sized episode for this channel? Well, after quite a bit of noodling on this problem, I had an idea. What if I generated a word cloud. You see, a word cloud takes all the words in a document and then spits out an arrangement of those words based on their proximity of meaning, frequency, and general velocity taking us to the moon. You can do this too. The word cloud generators are often free online and there's a ton of them. Just find content and paste it into a large text box and click that generate button. Works on earning reports too. I should do that on this channel more or maybe put those on the website, hmm, or both. I have heard the request for more videos. Maybe snack size dailies is an option that can really improve my animation pipelines. Speaking of improvements, that's what this patent is all about. In the case of the recent patent award of the Flex Network, what is it you get when you toss it into a word cloud? Well, you get what's on the screen. Now, what is it you see here? Well, there's a bunch of words for sure, but do you see what's really on the screen? The words alignment, amount, application area, block capture, code, muting, can use data, destination device, display, example, information, interaction, network, optical, portion, processing user via viewfinder. Hmm. To answer this puzzle, we need to go back to the grocery store or a retail store in concept. If you've shopped at a retailer in the recent 10 years that uses any type of computing technology, then ask, what is actually happening there? You have a scanner, and it often scans a barcode. That then does some sort of payment, and the patent itself describes itself as, quote, this invention relates generally to code generation for data exchange, and more particularly to a multi-part code system for an interaction where portions of the multi-part code are unusable individually, end quote. Ha, huh. those were, well, words. So what is that exactly? Well, Flex had just patented an important new way to pay with crypto in a way that works with old world technology. And it's worth diving into those details even more. But I want to pivot us slightly into the lane with the man holding the boot collecting money. You see, when Flexa and the AMP token are all about spend, meaning if you want to spend the tokens, then we get that done with Flexa Network's AMP token. And now think about Anchor. Anchor is building utility across all the blockchains. Anchor is working on even more utility and the run rate of their current offering is very impressive. But the recent video on the gaming SDK just happened to cross my mental awareness at the same time I was pulling apart the Flexa Network and AMP token again. So let me first put two ideas on the screen and beware, tinfoil hat is required before we continue from here. First, Flexa Network has a spend SDK. Second, Anchor is looking to build a gaming SDK. Seriously, just write that down for a moment and then start drawing arrows. Imagine for a moment you could build a new app, one that leverages the capability of the Flexa network to spend any cryptocurrency. 
and then combine that with the Anchor Gaming SDK that allowed you to tap into nearly any blockchain. In one app, you could have both all the spend capabilities of the AMP token, while at the same time having all the capabilities of the Anchor token. You see, those Anchor RPCs, they are actively being used. I even have proof from the head of Anchor product to share with you on this point. It's a footnote worthy of attention. You may want to sit up for this one. Quote, we are now serving closer to 5 billion requests per day. 325,000 USD per day of value. That's in excess of 118 million USD annual run rate of produced value. End quote. Ah, moon cheese. Okay, now put that thought in your head and free a space for this next bit. Let's switch over to Flexa Network. Now, if you load up their website, we can navigate to where you see the spend capacity of the Flexa Network around $850 million which funny enough is pretty close to Anchor's fully diluted market cap as of the time the script is written. That's just an interesting coincidence. Or is it? Hmm. Well, pause that thread. We'll need RPCs again, but we need to jump over to what Anchor is doing and how that fits into RPCs generally. And then I'll connect us back into the gaming SDK, Flexa, and a little surprise Algron. Okay. Let's look at the recent roadmap of Anchor. The timing of this roadmap is fun for me because I just mentioned in the 600 subscriber milestone and a short channel update video that the purpose of our roadmap is twofold. One, it should give some rough ideas on where one is going, but equally important is that it should speak to where you've been. And review of the Anchor roadmap is exactly that. And if I didn't know better, the Anchor fan is subscribed to this channel. Wouldn't that be surreal? Hi fam. Now let's look at this roadmap and specifically this clip. First of all, you can find this image on Reddit. What I love about this is that you can clearly see Algron's logo right here. And you might ask, wait, Joss is presenting at an Ethereum conference in Denver wearing NVIDIA inspired attire. And yet ask, why is Algron at an Ethereum conference? Algron isn't based on Ethereum. It's a completely different chain. And viewer, you see the thing you should frame here is that Algron has just announced a developer grant of some financial size to solve linking Algron to Ethereum. Remember when I called Algron part of the AAA play for 2022? Just imagine the bounty of the sea when the bridge is built into Ethereum. I need to do an even deeper dive on just this topic, but let's go back to the roadmap. On the roadmap, it is called out that in 2018, Anchor started out as a distributed computing network. Specifically, the problem that Ryan and Chandler were solving involved capacity management. You can find this if you dig for really old interviews with these two. The duo observed that there was a lot of idle computing in the data center, and were looking at a way to make use of that specific problem. Then in 2019 to 2020, there was a chance idea of offering a centralized API around these capacity management ideas. And a quick sidebar, do you recall the, well, story of how AWS started? It's intriguing. Continuing on, so in 2021 began decentralization of the prior year's worth of effort. And if you recall the Q4 of 2021 roadmap, a keener understanding that tokenomics were the key to unlocking a global decentralized computing network that enabled applications to interact with, well, all blockchains. 2022 is intriguing. Global distribution is an interesting phase, but equally interesting is the idea of a decentralized load balancer called out for 2023. What is that and why is it needed? I have one unusual idea about it. The idea involves the proliferation of apps and the end of the centralized app stores. Let's return back to the Anchor Gaming SDK. The Anchor Gaming SDK, I argued in a recent video, targets three specific platforms. However, after some more due diligence, I've concluded that there's a wider deployment target than I initially anticipated. First off, let's just walk through this. The Anchor Gaming SDK is going to access different components of a device. One of those include networking. The networking block here, what's it doing? Well, it's making API calls. Now, I mentioned that the API calls in a prior video would end up calling RPC endpoints, but did not specify what those might be. On the screen, let's shine a light on that list. It is not everything, but it's enough for us to illustrate a point. On the screen are Polygon, Phantom, Avalanche, Binance, Ethereum, Near, Arbitrum, Solana, XDAI, and more. Okay, so the Anchor Gaming SDK is more than game. Why do I say that? I say that because I've been giving a lot of thought lately to how to bring the Solana-based UNDD token into your hands in creative ways. I ran that sweepstakes not long ago, and that was a good one, but it required a bit more management and time, uh, the most precious resource than I have available to do again. And naturally, if I can make use of the Anchor platform to put UNDD tokens to even better use, well, that make it even better. And those thoughts got me thinking, what if the Anchor SDK existed today? What would it offer and how would I make use of it? That brought me to a concept of deployments. 
which there's a better set of words to label this idea, but just run with me for a moment here. So if you have this Anchor SDK, it's getting deployed with an application. Now I covered in a prior video that deployment might include things like Unity Engine, the Unreal Engine, and even the Godot Engine. However, if there's an SDK that targets those, then realistically there's an SDK that's portable across to things beyond games. Now I had teased the idea of movies and film, but there's other quote, things, end quote. Things like websites, which this channel has at unusualdd.com, but lacks an N SDK to interact with Anchor in any meaningful way. For starters, I need to a grant of just some sort to make use of an RPC endpoint at Anchor. I was mulling over ways to add Anchor support to the website. It dawned on me that, wait a minute, if there's website support and phone app or game consoles, then technically Anchor would also fit into something even bigger. What's bigger than games? Well, e-commerce is on the web. E-commerce, save Shopify and others. What if you could run your Shopify store completely decentralized? I actually know some Shopify store owners, and this doesn't seem so far-fetched to me. The shop owners don't care where their sites are hosted largely. They just want them to work and provide more sales. And this is going to now thread us over to Flexa Network Spin SDK. The Flexa Network Spin SDK takes the ideas of crypto and enables e-commerce. With their SDK, you can send or receive payment. So just take a moment to go back to the big idea for a moment. Imagine if you had a single app capable of interacting with a wide mesh network of RPC endpoints that could also tap into the Flexa Spin SDK. What all could you bring to the world with that? Well, in this channel's case, it'd be something pretty weird, but also now completely unknown. And after all, that's why we're both here thinking and dreaming about the future. It'll probably involve some cake. Any way that you slice that cake, this is a tasty idea. The question is the timing and market fit. Timing is pretty key because who wants to launch something or anything new when everyone is waiting for winter to thaw? You see, whether new or existing software starts, peering that puts Anchor and Flexa Network Spin SDKs to use in the same application remains to be seen, but I do know this. This is Unusual Due Diligence. I am your host, Poseidon. In today's fresh episode, I noted that software could be written soon that joins together both the spin capability of Flexa Network SAMP token with the blockchain access utility of the Anchor token. That is a very real possibility. Even better, I'm still looking for ways to connect Anchor and Malgron together with the UNDD token. The technology is evolving quickly and the path may yet be revealed. Will Solana SPL tokens one day be able to be used to buy or sell goods by way of Flexa Network? Hashtag any asset? Will Anchor or their well-funded operation one day provide this channel a generous grant to build something interesting? Only the universe knows for sure. Make some waves, my friends.